Hello and welcome back to TNN's coverage of the world's nine best fantasy football players league. I'm your host, and this is what we have for you this week. The first round of the playoffs are complete and now behind us. To recap, we send it out to Tommy Bahama. A very happy week two of fantasy football playoffs to all nine of our best fantasy football fans. I'm Tommy Bahama reporting to you live from LAX with your week one recap. Week one of our playoffs saw buys for the top two teams in our winner's bracket, In It 2 0 Win It and 10th Avenue Touchdown, and a buy for our bottom two teams in the loser's bracket, Undefeated Never Lost and Big Chungus 22. These teams and their respective play in the regular season have earned themselves first round buys. We start this recap in the loser's bracket, where our teams fought to avoid an end of season punishment. Coaches Joe Facciabene and Mike Visconti faced off this week with some stellar mid-season trash talk coming back to haunt some coaches, as Nelson Aguilar, Brandon Ayuk, and Kareem Hunt stood out and played great games to help coach Joe Facciabene survive and avoid punishment. Our second game in the loser's bracket this weekend saw the Harry Snodders, early season favorites and playoff hopefuls, take on the Texarkana Bandits, a favorite of my co-worker, Danny Football. Unfortunately, Danny Football's team could once again not pull through, and we saw Lamar Jackson finally show up and show out for the Harry Snodders. They also survive and avoid Punishment. We now move our recap to the winner's bracket, where teams are fighting for that championship, the shit-talking rights, and that sweet, sweet prize and trophy. Our first game saw two regular season studs face off as the Lock'em Sock'em Robots battled the mental brick walls. Unfortunately, Brett Catalinic's team ran into a brick wall this week and could not handle the absolute force that showed up on offense for the Lock'em Sock'em Robots. Tooch has got that team running well and like a well-oiled machine, and they are ready to power through into the next round of playoffs. In our final matchup of the Week 1 playoffs, we saw Team Mvanek take on Bro Chill, It's Just Njoku. For Bro Chill, It's Just Njoku, we saw Jonathan Taylor and A.J. Brown step up to combine for 50 points and create a lead that just could not be surmounted by Team Mvanek. Congratulations to our winners this week, and good luck to our losers in the losers bracket to survive and avoid that punishment. I'm Tommy Bahama, returning and never again leaving. That's a promise. And happy week two. And thank you, Tommy Bahama. And now, here is Danny Football with his picks for week two. 15. Hey, what's up, guys? You know who it is. Danny Football here, back with another week, Expert Predictions. Last week, a pretty solid week for me, went 3-1, and one, moving my total on the year to 50-32 and 32 for the regular season and the playoffs so far. My guest, Will, um, Unfortunately, beat me again, going 4-0. He was the first guest this year to get none wrong, but considering it was only four games that he had to pick, I don't think I'm going to count it because I'm the host and I make the rules here. Looking forward to getting Will back on the show next year. I am going to redeem myself next time. But now, it's a new week. There's a new guest, a new chance to beat the expert, and a new chance for me to redeem myself against this person who beat me earlier this year. Guest, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it's Mike Vanek, the owner and uh, namesake of soon-to-be sixth-place team, sixth-place champion, Team M. Vanek. Um, it's good to see you again, Danny Football. Thanks for having me on the show again, my old friend, and I'm looking forward to the picks this week. All right, we're going to start things off with the toilet bowl. Just as a reminder, we're going to pick who we think is going to win and save themselves from moving forward in the toilet bowl. 
First up, we have Too Many Cooks taking on the Harry Snodders. Too Many Cooks currently favored in this one, 89% chance to win. Both of these teams got the win in the Toilet Bowl last week. It's going to be the battle for 7th place. Mike Vanek, who do you like here? Um, so I like the Harry Snodders in this one. I think that uh, they've had a lot of bad luck at the end of the season. Uh, their morale ran out towards the end. Um, but luckily, they, they pulled out a win in the Toilet Bowl last week, and, and they're going to continue it into this week. Um, I think Lamar Jackson, uh, after at coming back from his, his cramping situation, is going to come back better than ever, and, and he's going to have a good game. And I think that the Harry Snodders and Timmy Shea are, is going to take, uh, what is it, seventh place in the league? Yeah. He's going to take yeah, seventh, seventh place. place. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's a pretty good pick, but I, I'm going to have to hit you with the, the not-so-fast mm-hmm. on this one. Snodders, they're, they're looking like they're going to be without McCaffrey. Still, Ronald Jones going to be out with COVID. It's going to leave the Snodders a big hole at their running back spot. Lamar did have a nice bounce back last week. He should be good to get them some points, but for too many cooks, Brandon Cooks out last week. I was a little worried for them. They still managed to pull out the win. It looks like he's going to be back this week. Going to be a big boost for team morale. We all know that nothing would be funnier than Brandon Cooks going off for Joe's team in the playoffs. I'm just going to keep it simple here. Too many Cooks. They got some nice matchups this week. Snodders. Running back situation scares me. Too many Cooks. I love this disagreement. I love it. Starting on strong. Next up. In the toilet bowl, we have Team Big Chungus 22 taking on the Tex Arcana Bandits. Big Chungus favored here, 91% chance to win. Honestly, I don't have too much to say about this matchup. Fans of the show are gonna know I have been high on the Bandits all year. But even I am having a hard time trying to justify how they pull out a win I uh, come out on top here. Kyler, short round, has really fallen off recently, not had performances that you've been come to uh, expect out of him. And their skill position players are frankly just not as good as the players for Big Chungus. Not to mention that Big Chungus has the hottest commodity in the NFL right now, Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Clearly better than washed up quarterback Carson Wentz. Look, anything could happen. As a famous guest has said, the NFL is a mystery, <laughs> but all signs point to Big Chungus getting the win here, and that's who I'm picking this week. Great pick. I agree. Um, let's be honest. Nobody cares about this matchup. Nobody's <laughs> nobody's gonna tune in. This is, you know, but but I do agree. And, and, and let me say that both of these owners have given uh, me and, and team and Vanek unnecessary agita this year. So so Grayson, uh, owner of Texarkana Bandits, has um, has been involved in two of team and Vanek's worst trades, the, uh, trading me the worst quarterback in the NFL, Carson Wentz, along with uh, COVID. Um, COVID, uh, yeah, James Conner, yeah, James Conner got COVID, and, and Will Fuller, who got suspended. So uh, I, I have a lot of personal beef with with Grayson and Tex Arcana Bandits, um, but then uh, Big Chungus uh, also tried to knock me out of the playoffs the last uh, week of the season when he had um, every uh, intent to tank, but he just did it out of personal spite. But anyway, um uh, putting aside all, I guess, personal uh, vendettas with these two owners, I would say that Team Big Chungus does have uh, the better matchup, the better team, and um, Jalen Hurts and um, my friend, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, Justin Jefferson, they, they pull it out this week. Next up, final matchup in the toilet bowl here. We have Ham and Throw taking on undefeated, never lost. Ham and Throw, currently favored, 50 50- Four percent in this one. Who do you like here? I hate Ham and Throw. <laughs> ham and Throw has been at my throat all year. 
when I was the favorite in the league to win the championship, there was a bunch of talk, everyone was saying it, he was a hater. And, and looking back on it, he was obviously right, because I did lose, but just for that personal beef, because he's been hating on my team, he's been really low on my team, I hope that Hamburg Fleur lose, loses by a million. Um, so I like Miguel in this one. Yeah, this is one I've had circled as a game to watch this week because regardless of the outcome, whoever wins, it is going to be hilarious for everybody else. This is just, you could not envision a better matchup in the toilet bowl than these two going at it. Um, Hammond Throw was on a mission at the end of the year to try to spite Miguel and Undefeated Never Lost making their own draft picks worse in the process just so that Miguel would not have the satisfaction of having a higher draft pick. <laughs> Hammond Throw also came down to earth last week, barely getting over 150 points after that big showing, 230 from the week before. I, I've heard that it was very satisfying for the commissioner to watch Hammond Throw crash and burn <laughs> after his one explosive performance um, over the past like 10 weeks. So basically just showing the last week was a complete fluke for Hammond Throw. There's already been some drama between these two teams leading mm. up to this week. Uh, Miguel predicting a win. Visconti saying he's not going to face Miguel. Obviously he was wrong. Honestly, I didn't even look at any of the players, any of the matchups here. Undefeated, never lost, is motivated. Ham and throw is just bad. I'm taking undefeated, never lost. Love that. Ham and throw, I know you're out here watching this. Your team's bad. Moving on to the championship bracket, we have Team M. Vanek taking on the mental brick walls. M. Vanek, currently favored here, 72% chance to win. Big game for fifth place. Team M. Vanek snuck into the playoffs in the final week of the regular season, only to blow it in the first round, disappointing this expert, ruining my perfect week, let me add, showing that they do truly have terrible luck when it comes to fantasy football. On the other hand, the metal brick walls have gotten pretty cold at the end of the year, losing their last two, and they've not put up more than 160 points in their last four matchups. This game is for fifth place. Both of them lost last week, and it does not matter at all aside from the draft positioning. I don't know if these two teams are going to tank in this matchup to see who can get the better pick, but regardless of if they tank or not, I'm picking the team I think has had the worst luck to win here the curse of Carson Wentz will continue until he is off this team and I'm going with team M Vanek to win here it would be too perfect if they keep their bad luck rolling and get a win here get the worst draft spot a win might I add the one week you do not want to win I think that's exactly what's going to happen to any football (laughs) I think team M Vanek has taken years off of my life this year. Uh, I just, team, or team owner Mike Vanek decided to go all in on his team about midway through the season, uh, trading a lot of young players and, and future draft picks to get uh, supposedly good players for the rest of the season. But then, yes, by uh, many strokes of, of unluck, uh, he decided to, uh, all of his players decided to get hurt or suspended or get COVID. Um, somehow still making the playoffs. And I guarantee you that when Team M. Vanek tries to tank this week, he is going to win. So I, uh, Team M. Vanek deserves a loss for all that he's been through, but I unfortunately do think he's going to get a win this week. Two important games here. The winners still alive, contending for the championship. First one, we've got the Lockham Sockham Robots facing off against In It to a Win It. Robots currently favored here, 81% chance to win. These are two teams that will tell you the other is clearly going to win this week. Robots have been hot lately, putting up over 190 in three straight weeks. Big performance last week. But is their luck 
going to run out. In a two win it, it's going to have a big test this week, and we're going to see if their strategy of selling at the trade deadline and stumbling into the first round by um, is really going to uh, be their ultimate demise here. All I'm saying is Chris Carson would surely look very nice in this fantasy lineup this week with Gibson out. I'm sure Jacob is going to be kicking himself, but he probably wants to lose anyway, so who knows. This one is going to come down to the wire, and I expect both owners to preemptively raise the white flag in surrender multiple times on Sunday, but I'm going to give a slight edge to the robots. They have been hot, and it is just too hard to pick against this team right now. Robots for the win here. Yeah, I agree with that. I think these. Uh, I think this is going to be the best matchup of the week, probably the closest one. Both really solid teams through and through. Uh, Lockham Stockham Robots has the advantage at the quarterback position for sure, and Rogers is on a is on a tear right now. And uh, in a to a win, it did sell Tom Brady at the trade deadline to Team Vanek, which I have in writing he did regret. So we know that that uh, Jacob Calathor and in it to a win it has made some errors. Um, and yeah, I, I do think that Lockham Stockham Robots is coming off a big week last week. He put up a lot of points. I think the uh, momentum is going to carry into this week. Um, and I think that he's going to pull out a win, but a close win. And finally, we have 10th Ave touchdown taken on Bro Chill. It's just Njoku. 10th Ave currently favored here, 77% chance to win. Who do you like in this one? So unlike, or I should say like Tommy Bahama each week, I don't think that Bro Chill at just Njoku is going to show up. I th- <laughs> There's my shot at him. <laughs> I think that... I think that Nooch has no business in playing this game. I'm sorry, Nooch. I love you. You like you're one of my best friends, but you have no business in this game. I, I think I even P, P, only I know this, but Nooch texted me uh, last week on Saturday, and he said I might as well just forfeit this game because you're going to beat me by 40 points when he found out that all his players had COVID. So although Nooch has mastered the art of the jinx, I think that Tom's team is just too good. Uh, I think that. Derrick Henry is going to put up another huge game, especially against the Detroit defense. Um, and I just the duo of Derrick Henry and Devontae Adams is just kind of unstoppable right now. So I think that uh, 10th Avenue touchdown is going to win this game uh, by a pretty big margin, and uh, we're going to see Tom in the championship. Yeah, I think that's a good pick here. Brochill, they, they managed to pull off what many people considered to be an upset last week against Team M. Vanek. And now they see themselves in the semifinals after a 190-point performance. 10th Ave, on the other hand, they're coming off a bye. We're going to have to see how they adjust to that time off. I, I have to point out, they would have lost to this Bro Chill, it's just Njoku team last week. Would have been really close, but they would have been the losers there. Bro Chill, going to be getting David Johnson and DJ Moore back this week. Going to be a big boost to their skill position players. But honestly, I think this comes down to 10th Ave and their boom-bust nature as a team. They're big on scoring either 220 or 170. Could go either way. And they've got some good matchups this week. Derrick Henry should feast against the Lions. And I expect this freight train to keep chugging along into the championship game. 10th Ave in this one. Mike Vanek, thank you so much for being on the show this week, giving me another chance to beat you. Before you leave, I have to know, who do you like to win the championship? And then, who do you like to take the toilet bowl crown? Uh, so I like Lock'em Sock'em Robots to win the championship. Uh, like you said, I know I'm not just saying that to get on uh, the commissioner's good side, but um i think that they are more consistent than 10th avenue touchdown and i think that uh it all depends on he, he is boomer bust but uh lock em, sock em, they're pretty consistent throughout and i think that they're gonna have a good uh end to the year and they are gonna win out um as for the toilet bowl uh i would love to see visconti lose win, lose the toilet bowl win the toilet bowl whatever you do with the toilet bowl and get the toilet bowl um but uh i think it's gonna be grayson 
as a logical pick, although um, I do hope and I pray and I wish that Visconti does get the toilet bowl. I, I think uh, that's something we can all get behind. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much again for being on wish you all the best with your picks of course not as good as me can't beat the expert but thank you for being on and look forward to having you back on again next year thanks Danny Football it was fun Uh, happy holidays to you and yours thank you to Danny Football and guest Mike Vanek for those great picks that's all we have for you this time be sure to come back next week I'm your host, and this has been TNN.